yeah, so now we'll kind of get into a little bit more of the nitty gritty as you go to get started using Recruit. And as you'd expect, the first thing I want to do is actually go ahead and create the job opening that you want to hire for. So to do that, we can go ahead and open up Recruit here. And from our homepage or really from anywhere, we'll click on the job openings up there in the top left. From within our job openings, we can go ahead and use this little icon in the top right. Again, very similar if you are used to the CRM. Um, you can either create one individually using the plus. If you were tracking this on a spreadsheet before, or if you're migrating from an older or different ATS system, you could go ahead and import all of those via a spreadsheet as well. Um, for now, I'll walk through an example of just creating one from scratch from here within uh, Zoho Recruit. And so one thing is you kind of open up this page, we'll see up in the top left, we could actually choose a job template. Um, one thing about Recruit is if you are hiring for a position that you plan on hiring for, you know, multiple times, like I'm going to hire now and in six months, I might be hiring again. You'll actually want to create a job opening for each of those hirings. You don't just want to reopen an old one. And so if you know that you're going to have a cyclical hire like that, you could go ahead and create a job template for it which would pull in things like the title, the tar you know, the uh, industry, the salary, and all those, um, those relevant items that are going to be mostly the same between different times that we hire for this role. And so once you've created those, they'll show up here within our job opening creation. And so you know, now I've kind of filled in some information on the page, thinking that we're hiring here for a Zoho developer. And I'll kind of run through each of these fields and how they'll play into your overall process. Um, so first, of course, we're going to give it the job title. Uh, that's actually what would display when we post this out to a job board. So it's important to make sure that that's going to be something attractive for the candidates you're looking for. In our case, because this would be a remote position, I actually like to put that right in the title itself so that people can see that as they're scrolling a job board. I think a lot of people are valuing that nowadays. So if you are hiring remote, you want to go ahead and drop that in the title. We're going to associate this to a department and to a hiring manager as well. Um, I do want to highlight just because someone is the hiring manager doesn't mean they're the only one who could schedule an interview or do anything related to this job opening, um, but they're kind of the primary owner of uh, the responsibility of getting this position filled. Um, we can also highlight the number of positions that we're looking to hire. Um, you know, in this case, maybe we're just looking for one. You could put that as high as you'd like. And again, that will display out to your relevant uh, job postings. We're also going to give it a title. Um, within Zoho Recruit, it treats those as a dropdown. So you kind of create your list of titles that you want to fill into and then select those within the particular job boards. Um, nice thing about it being a dropdown is that you're going to have a consistent list. Um, so I'm not going to put uh, developer one time and then, you know, implementer the next time, right? I have a nice consistent list that'll be the same regardless of what the opening is for. Of course, important to know when we actually opened up this job opening. Um, there are a couple like technical things around this. So, you know, you, it won't let you post to a job board if the date opened is I think more than 30 days in the past. So important to try to get this stuff done relatively quickly to make sure that you're able to, you know, run any of those integrations that you want to, to your outside sources. Um, we can also assign a recruiter to this. Uh, so again, kind of in that vein where I might be the hiring manager, but maybe Brett is going to be the one chasing them down and maybe scheduling the interviews on my behalf you can actually assign that recruiter to this job opening to allow them full access based on your permissions. You can also set a job type. Again, this would be like full-time, part-time, a contract employee. Um, we can go ahead and define what our target date is for a hire. Now that doesn't mean we couldn't hire someone after that date. Um, it's just a nice way to know if we do pull a report on these, you know, when we're expecting all of these various positions to be filled. Of course, we can define the relevant work experience that someone should have, maybe one to three years in the given industry. Um, you can build out a full set of skill sets that you'd like as well if you want to associate things that way. Kind of a new feature that they're rolling out, trying to read through those skill sets and, and kind of do some of this mapping for you, but that's kind of early beta right now. Um, lastly here, we'll see, we can also note the industry. So in our case, this is a technology job. Um, you know, you might, even though you as a company work in a specific industry, the positions that you're hiring for might vary. So you might be hiring for sales, you know, a technology facing role, a marketing role, customer service. So you kind of want to define your industry that way to make sure that it's clear what exactly someone is applying for. 
And then of course we can give it a salary or a salary range. Um, we can contextualize this more, which I'll show you in a moment, but you wanna give like a ballpark here that would display. Now, one thing that is important to know is if you're using that um, jobs portal, the new kind of client portal where people could log in and maybe apply to these things, the salary does display there. So it's good to give it an accurate range and you know, when in doubt, make that range nice and broad so that you can make decisions based on a particular candidate's um, qualifications or job history. Kind of continuing down the page, you can go ahead and give this um, an address. So, you know, in our case, we're kind of just using our corporate address or, you know, everything other than the street. Um, they did add this over the course of COVID that we can actually say this is a remote job. Um, the nice thing is, is that when you go and post this out to job openings, um, if you look at Indeed, they actually have a filter for remote jobs um, and this will satisfy that filter. So defining it this way is really important if it is a remote job so that it shows up into the right groupings if people are going to find this on any of your job boards that you post to. And then last but not least here down at the bottom, we have our job description information. Um, this is a rich text field, so you can actually have links, you can do bolded text, you can have bulleted lists, right? Any of those various things that you'd like. And again, this will post out to any of those job boards. Uh, so it's nice to make this, um, you know, full of useful information so that people are able to kind of know what they're getting into as they apply to the job. Again, I wanna highlight here down at the very bottom of that section, um, I contextualize the salary a little bit and say, depending on relevant experience, um, you wanna keep that out of your salary field itself so that you can report on that nicely. Um, but it's still nice to have a little bit of a call out there in the job description itself so that people know, you know that this is definitely a range based on that, um, that information. And this is a real job posting and will always be. I don't care if you're watching this webinar in six or months or a year. <laughs> this is a real job posting. Reach out. <laughs> okay. Kind of moving forward here to our next slide. Sweet. So now we have our job opening here created, and it's got kind of everything that we need to actually kick off this process. So we'll see across the top, you get kind of a pipeline of, you know, which candidates are in any of these various stages. And then again, just like in the CRM, we could always scroll down and make edits to these fields as we need to. Um, so it's not like it's locked. Uh, it's kind of a living uh, job opening that could be changed over time. 